Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater, and while we were at Aquashella, we picked up some poison dart frog tadpoles from my buddy Chris. They are black and green. We got nine of them. They're in different stages. We've got one that's fully morphed into a frog already, one with four legs, one with two legs, one starting out with two legs, and then the rest have no legs at all. We've got to do water changes. I need to split these two up, so I'm going to show you how to set up one of our containers and also show you guys how we rear the dart frogs until they are large enough to put them in their full setup while the full setup is cycling or maturing and getting ready. All right, so we've got two tadpoles in this one container. We didn't have enough containers when we uh, got home. We weren't really prepared. We were kind of given these by Chris. So I wanted to split these guys up. You can tell one's a lot bigger than the other one. So they're definitely competing for food. And if the big guy isn't getting enough food, he can eat the smaller one. So we're gonna split them up. We're gonna try and get the little one into the smaller container. And we're gonna pour out half this water out into this container. So that way they have similar water parameters. I'm just going to take a little bit of the moss, maybe one of the leaves. I've got more Indian almond leaves here, just tiny ones. So I'm going to put another one in there and two in this bucket. And then I find the best way to get the tag poles out is to go get a little spoon. So I got a plastic spoon. I'm just going to be very gentle. Get them into the corner. And into his new home. Now the water that I prepared for the shrimp for the caradina inside, it's RO water with GH minerals only, no KH. So it promotes acidic water. So I'm going to use that that I prepare for it just to kind of top off the container for a nice fresh water change. And I'm gonna do the same for the other container. Now, if I wasn't splitting these guys up, what I would do is empty out half the water and pour that out and then pour in new water about once a week and then I'm going to feed these guys every two to three days. And they are due for feeding also, and I'm going to go get a little bit of flake food for them. Removal bug bites flakes. I pour a little bit out into the cap, and with my fingers I crush it up. Nice little tiny pieces, and then just a little pinch. into each container. And then they'll eat on that for the next day or two. And you wanna make sure you don't overfeed because then you'll get the water polluted and you wanna make sure that it is nice and clean so that the tadpoles don't get any fungus. That's why we add the Indian almond leaves. They have a lot of antifungal properties and also they are great for antibiotics as well and all the tannins and everything like that is great to help boost their immune system as well all right so these three containers are all just normal tadpoles none of their legs have come out yet but they are all due for a water change all the tannins in the water may make it look like the water is really dirty however uh, that's just the black water effect it's really good for them but we are at the one week point, so we're gonna go ahead and pour out half the water into a container. I wanna make sure I keep all the leaves. And then we also have moss in there as well. That'll help with the nitrates. And also provide a lot of little tiny microorganisms that live in the moss that the dart frogs are gonna eat as well. I just pour that out, put it back up and put it back in. being careful that I don't 
pour out the tadpoles. Again, same water that I used to set up the cups. I'll fill it back up to the little black tannin mark. And we're gonna get a little bit of food for these guys as well. Make sure your fingers are nice and dry before you touch the flake food or else it will st just stick to your fingers. And the reason why I pour it into the cap is I tapped out way too much. So I'd rather that go into the cap than into the containers. So I'll save that for the next ones. And these guys are done. And I'll feed these guys again in two days. They're a little bit bigger than the smaller one smaller one I'll feed like every three days but these guys are nice and chunky all right so now this one is just starting to get its hind legs it's just starting to morph you can see the two little bumps and the hind legs will get significantly larger before the front legs start to come out but he's due for a water change. So we're gonna pour out. Get a couple pieces of moss back for him. Now I know the parameters are on point, they're the same water that I added to them originally. Also everything's at room temperature so I'm not worried about dripping in the container or anything like that. And you just want to, these pieces were kind of a little bit bigger but you want to break it up as fine as you can. All right, so this one has nice developed back legs and it has little tiny front legs just starting to develop. You can see the little bulges coming out at the front. Also, he has some color to him already. You can tell he's gonna be a green and black dark frog. And he is also due for a water change and feed. We've had dark frogs before, but this is our first time with them as tadpoles. I started to get into dark frogs about the same time I started getting into shrimp. And somebody down in Florida was getting out of shrimp and into dark frogs, so I decided to make a good trade. It was a good play for me at the time, but I have always wanted to get back into dark frogs. and we took the advantage. I always wanted to start them off as tadpoles as well. So here we go. On to the next one. All right, now this guy is almost fully morphed into a frog. He's got front and back legs. However, he is still holding on to his tail. Lots of nice color to him already. Looks just like a frog with an extra tail. I really did luck out with these guys. Green is my favorite color. I always wanted greens. But 
The Indian almond leaves are also great little hiding spots for these guys. They're super, super shy. So they love to feel safe and secure underneath little hiding spots. But I think we're done stressing this guy out. We'll get his water change going on. I'm not gonna do too much out of his. He's probably a day or two from climbing out over the side. So we'll keep an eye on him. Once we start to see him leave the water, that's when we move him onto the nursery tank. We're gonna give him a little bit of food as well. And then I'll use this container uh, for the other guy when he's done, I'll just move them up. I know their containers are a little shallow, so when he's out of this one, we'll use this one for the next one and so on and so on, so they have a little bit of room before they climb out. But on to the next one. So now I save the water. You could use this to water some house plants or even save it in case you had some uh, bacterial issues with your shrimp, you could add this to that tank. It's full of tannins and whatnot. I, I'm just going to throw it out in the ponds, uh, save on some water out there, but I uh, don't want anything from the frogs or anything like that getting into the shrimp. So just to be safe, I'm not adding this to my shrimp ponds, but if the frogs were my own and I reared them and knew everything was my water, etc., and there was no parasites or anything that could get in, I wouldn't mind adding this straight to my shrimp tanks. Alright, so now that brings us to tadpole number nine, who has fully morphed already into a full froglet. Now, I would never recommend somebody getting these guys for the moment. However, we've had these guys in the past, and Shelby has the isopod cultures going. And all the isopods have springtails in them, so the dwarf whites were a perfect starter culture to grab some of the sphagnum moss and dirt from that little tub that she has to get this little guy an instant nursery, so that way we could rear it and get it bigger. It's easier to feed these guys in one of these containers rather than the full large size, large size tank. I'll usually feed these guys about 15 fruit flies dusted in uh, calcium powder however I see yesterday that there's still a couple flies in here so I'll wait until tomorrow to feed there's also plenty of springtails and isopods for it to munch on so those are little backup foods but you want to have a little uh, mature culture going before you ever get tadpoles or anything like that so I'm just lucky to have Shelby all around and then this little guy all he really needs is a little misting every day I've got the RO water I use RO water to spray down the frogs because I don't want any of the mineral calcium deposit to build up on the sides of the tank or the container. And once this guy gets a little bit bigger and he's eating all of his flies ever feeding, then I can move him into one of the uh, larger terrariums that we're going to set up. And we got to get those set up and cycled and running. That way uh, there's plenty of little tiny food and algae and stuff growing in the tank. So a nice living environment that will keep him nice and healthy and happy. Now his little setup is just a little container with a lid, drilled some holes on for ventilation, a little piece of cork, he likes to hide under that as well as the Indian almond leaves. Also we threw in some aqua char, helps with the smell as well as the springtails seem to thrive in it and it does really well. So we've got that going in there and then the sphagnum moss help with the humidity control and he's gonna hide in there and the isopods and springtails will breed in that as well. And that's just about it besides the little um, organic dirt in the bottom. So me and Shelby definitely have issues when it comes to just having uh, a couple of something. So we have already been talking about possibly getting rid of some furniture to make room for another rack of terrariums not sure if we're gonna do it yet go off the deep end but uh it's 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 a probability and uh terrariums are coming next so please subscribe hit that notification bell if you want to see all the craziness happen 
with the dart frogs. So we're gonna do shrimp video every uh, other week and something like this to alternate. So thanks for watching.